Hey everybody, how you doing today? I am Lulzpy, and here is my review for the Call of Duty Vanguard beta. Uh, just letting you know, this is going to be a long one, so uh, strap yourself in. <laughs> so Call of Duty Vanguard, it is the third main title in the series held by Sledgehammer Games, and set to be the 16th consecutive annual release in the Call of Duty franchise. Now you'd think by this point that someone at Activision would know how to make a COD title by now, right? Now, just as a reminder, everything said in this video is my own personal opinion. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions on things, alright? There is no such thing as a wrong opinion. You understand? Alright, let's begin then. So, I wasn't a big fan of Vanguard. I know everyone's gonna come at me with the, oh, it's just a beta, but sheesh! That was still rough, even for a beta. Now, I'm still new in the COD beta scene, with World War II being the first beta I took place in. And the biggest issue I remember that one having was you could hear the M1 Grand ping all the way across the map. Now I had less issues playing the beta for Fallout 76, so I think that says something here. So anyways, that's enough general bashing of the game, let's get into the core issues I have with it. First off, the game is just plain boring. There's nothing that jumps out at me and says, wow, that's pretty cool, I could totally justify spending $60 on this game. We all know it's basically a copy-paste of Modern Warfare's mechanics with some added novelties like the breakable walls sprinkled on top. Those walls are so freaking stupid. I like the idea, I really do. But you need to go the route of Battlefield where you can take down an entire house. Having these random wooden boards scattered on walls and floors is just plain ridiculous. It's like an old cartoon where part of the scene is going to change so it's colored differently. Not to mention, half the time when I try and go through a wall, there's a part on the bottom that's not broken and I end up getting stuck on it. I have to end up either tack sprinting through it again, sliding, or crouching down and breaking it. It's just a pain in the ass. It ends up slowing everything down even more because I gotta stop and break this little piece of wall off and I'm getting my ankle caught on. I get that they want to have the map get destroyed during the match, but that's nothing new to the series. I did a short video comparing the toilet destruction between Vanguard and World War II, and World War II blew it out of the water. No pun intended. Can we talk about visuals for a minute? I'm not talking about the muzzle flash blurring enemies or how the game just glitches the fuck out sometimes. Now, ever since Modern Warfare was released, the art style of newer Call of Duties has messed with me. I've seen some other people mention the issue too here and there, with many more talking about this since Vanguard's first beta weekend. Now, enemies blend into the background. Uh, I can't freaking see them unless they're actively moving. If there's someone set up at a wall, mounted, and just sitting there waiting for me, chances are I'm not going to see them. It doesn't help that when I do see someone, I do a double take because I can't tell if they're friend or foe. Now honestly, why are there no fucking factions? Alright, that is one of the most asinine things this game has done. Are they worried someone might get offended when they see a <gasps> Nazi in a World War II game? Nah, we're going to totally confuse everyone by having the same characters on both teams. Now I hear you guys in the comments now, but Pi, it's the same as having specialists from Black Ops 3 and 4 on both teams. Yeah, I get that, but there were subtle differences for those two teams so we could tell them apart. There were still multiple factions. Each faction had a color palette or other distinctions so we could tell if they were or were not on our team. And let's be honest here, the nameplate doesn't always appear if the character model isn't fully visible. How many people are going to get screwed on hardcore because of this? You know what else happens when there's only one faction? There's only one announcer. Q Captain Butcher. This man was one of my favorite things from COD World War II. I love spawning into the headquarters at the start of a new event. I'd walk around and check out the visual changes, and then I'd go see Butcher. He'd replace Corporal Green as the quartermaster during events, bringing his humor and wit along for the ride. I would feel blessed to be graced by his presence. He has never returned since the last event of World War II. We haven't seen Butcher in years, and I'm teased every time I play Sandbox or someone would wear his uniform. And now, they've gone and ruined him. I was ecstatic when I heard his voice in the Champion Hill trailer. Butcher was back, baby! That alone made me happy. But the bloody man won't shut up! If you're having a good game, getting constant multi-kills, streaks, and so on, he's there every step of the way to let you know. Got a double kill? He'll yell it at you. On a Bloodthirsty? Yup, that too. Is an enemy glide bomb on the way? Nah, he won't mention that one after it lands on you. Turning on the subtitles and watching them take up half the screen was always a blast though. Now please, someone help me out here. I can't seem to understand how a AAA game developer 
working on the highest grossing video game year after year can mess the sound up this bad. Did they not playtest the game? Have someone else run quality assurance on it? I highly doubt it. We're the Q&A testers now. They asked the middleman in favor of having us do the work for them. Now I know the point of an alpha and beta is to provide feedback on a game so developers can squish bugs and make changes as seem fit, but this is just ridiculous. The overall volume for the game is just way too low. Now I run my earbuds through my TV's headphone jack and the volume is set to 30 and I never budget. All right, this has been perfect for every Call of Duty game except for COD 4, which is just way too loud. Vanguard, I had to turn up the volume and increase the volume in OBS so you could all could hear over my annoying ass voice. Now aside from that, there were many other audio issues. Footsteps, non-existent. Dogs, they're totally quiet, other than the occasional bark, but that could be heard across the entire map. No matter where they are, you hear the bark, it sounds like it's right in your head. And same for the dogs being caught in. Nothing better than a high-pitched whistle being blown in your ears. On occasion, I could also hear a care package smack the ground from across the map too. Whenever you do hear sound though, there is no directional audio. I rely sometimes on sound touring, but it's impossible in this game. Now while we're on the subject of streaks, let's talk about that for a bit. We should have never gone back to kill streaks. I thought Cold War was bad enough with its streak system, rewarding people for going on kill streaks by giving a bonus to your score, then carrying over after death. Now I know the COD community has never really been super objective oriented, but it's getting worse every single year. People avoid dog tags and go rushing straight for the B flag on Dom. If you don't get rewarded for playing the OBJ, why should you? I even caught myself ignoring it a few times when I started going off. Why stand in the patrol zone when you can stay 15 feet behind it and pick off enemies that try and capture it? Stick to the score streaks, please. Now, the streaks themselves. This is going to be a detailed breakdown of how I feel about every streak from the beta. Intel worked fairly well. I would just get unlucky and die as soon as I used it. Honestly, one of two things could help here. I think it either should persist through death but take away some time. Either that or have a slight buffer so if you die immediately after using it, it's not wasted and can be used again. Now, like I said, I've had people turn a corner as I'm putting down the radio and straight up melt me. BAM! Wasted intel. Now I honestly wasn't a big fan of the care package. It takes forever for the plane to spawn in, and then it just chucks the damn thing at you. It just falls from the sky at a rapid pace and slams to the earth like a meteor. Then it has the audacity to not tell you what streak is in it. Why can't it parachute in like in almost every other game? It was borderline funny watching these things tumble to earth. I bet killing someone with these would be hilarious though. Now, the spy plane did what a spy plane does. It showed enemy positions on the map. How can you mess that up? Well, let me tell you. For starters, they limited it so only one spy plane can be up at a time. Why? Why is this an issue? Why can't it just reset the timer and add another plane to the sky? Why can't they stack and increase the effectiveness of them? Show me which direction an enemy is facing, or if they're above or below me. World War II did it like this, and it worked perfectly. Yeah. Second, friendly and enemy spy planes are nearly indistinguishable from each other in the sky. There's no nameplates on them like previous games. Aside from that, there's so much going on in the sky that it's easy to miss them sometimes. Don't get caught looking at the sun either, or you'll be blinded for life. Now the counter spy plane. Boy oh boy, this thing annoyed the ever-loving crap out of me. I was happy that they blocked out the minimap again. I, I didn't like how World War II's counter recon worked. It wouldn't affect the minimap. It would destroy one enemy recon and prevent others from being used till it was over. Now, as with the spy plane, it's hard to see in the sky, and they just can't stack. Just one at a time, boys. The bigger issue, though, is its length. Insert penis joke here. <laughs> it lasts for 60 freaking seconds. That's too damn long. So you don't have your minimap and compass, footsteps are silent, and there's no directional audio. How bad could that be? The glide bomb is decent, though it takes too long to hit. Anyone that's played World War II can agree that using the glide bomb on USS Texas would take forever. In Vanguard, every glide bomb is on Texas. Now I'm kind of torn on the death machine. It's been weakened, but given exploding rounds with splash damage. I've seen clips where they had to land a handful of direct hits to kill someone, but it is nice for flushing out campers. Now the mortars were alright. I wish it was an actual canister, like the description says. It's more like an anti-tank mine that you bulkily lob at a location to mark for bombardment. Uh, it'd be better if it was like a colored smoke canister that you can lob like a grenade. Right now, I feel like I have to sprint in the other direction so I don't get taken out by my own mortars. 
the flame knot was so freaking fun it was so satisfying it has a ton of health with an unlimited flamethrower that has one hell of a range the only problem is the flames are weak but i guess it's balanced by the health range and unlimited ammo now the dogs are broken as fuck all right they are the most cheesy streak in the beta they're silent they're a one-hit kill and they teleport yes you heard that right they teleport if the quickest way to you is a ladder, they'll teleport to the top of it just to bite your ass off. I really don't think they should be an insta-kill either. A two-hit kill like War to War would be much better. It honestly looks like they're jumping up to give you a kiss when they attack. They basically have no recovery time either, so they can take out an entire group of players in a matter of seconds. Why don't they have an animation where they latch on and straight up murder an enemy? This would make much more sense for the one-hit kill thing. Why am I being licked to death? It is nice that when they're shot at, they get stunned. They tend to be a bit spongy, so that helps. Now going back to the Modern Warfare copy-paste thing, I've never been a fan of how that game feels. Now I applaud Infinity Ward for trying something new, but I just couldn't get behind it. Vanguard plays just like Modern Warfare, but worse. The movement is fast, like real fast. Every other movement though? Slow and clunky, crouching, proning, turning, everything. It's just so clunky. Pile on top of that the new suppression system, and it feels like we're tax burning in molasses. Why is suppression a thing? It's totally unnecessary. It's another novelty like the breakable walls. It needs to go, but I doubt Sledgehammer will do anything about it. There are weapon perks that help negate suppression, but it's still not enough. On the subject of weapons, let's talk Gunsmith. Is the Gunsmith cool? Yeah. Would I rather have a pick 10 system or even the system that World War II had? Yeah. I believe the Gunsmith is better suited for Warzone versus standalone multiplayer. It's cool to screw around with weird and wacky mods, but it hurts the game in the long run. You can add a total of 10 attachments to your weapons in Vanguard. A level 30 weapon versus a base weapon in the beta was a night and day difference. People are going to level up one or two weapons they like, fully kit them out, and make it a pain in the ass for anyone grinding camos. Not to mention the ammo types, changing calibers, exploding rounds, incendiary rounds, subsonic rounds, whatever the type that would blur your vision and slow you down. They're going to have a big hand in ruining this game. The maps in the beta were eh. It's been a hot minute since a COD game has had some awesome original maps. They've mostly been piggybacking on remastered versions of classic maps. Seeing as we're getting Dome and Castle from War to War, it seems like they're doing the same thing here. Now there are 16 multiplayer maps at launch, which is pretty cool, but the question is, will these maps be any good? How many will be remakes? World War II had remakes from Call of Duty 1, 4, and Modern Warfare 2, so who knows what games they'll plug from this time. I don't often pick on graphics. Hell, I enjoy plenty of games with bad graphics, whether it's a classic old game or something modern like 7 Days to Die, but I can't excuse this graphical downgrade. Why are last-gen consoles getting the shaft here? I mentioned a few times how my character, forever cursed to walk into the abyss of the main menu, looks like he has a buzz cut with a toupee on. This is just like the last-gen version of Black Ops 3 all over again. Do you remember last gen Black Ops 3? You don't want to remember last gen Black Ops 3. This has got to be the ugliest Call of Duty game on 8th generation consoles. Now, I hate the compass. I hate the mini map they're doing. I just hate everything about it, man. That's one of the things that should have stayed in Modern Warfare. How hard is it to realize the majority of players did not like that back in 2019? They even added the mini map to the game after Backlash, even the red dot still didn't appear. They really hid the traditional minimap behind a perk too. People keep calling Radar a clutch and say, just use the compass, don't chase red dots. Well, two things wrong with your statement there, bud. For one, on occasion I'd go an entire match without my compass loading in. If I wasn't using Radar on my class, I wouldn't have any idea where anyone was considering how god awful the audio is. And second, excuse me for crutching on something that's been used in 12 of the last 14 titles. If you're so awesome without using the minimap and talking down on people for red dot chasing, why are you even against the traditional style? You're making it sound like you destroy red dot chasers, so what's the big deal? What's up with the connections? I was having constant packet bursts, rubber banding, both myself and teammates, crashing games, and so forth. I know it's a beta, blah 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 blah, I don't give a fuck. Was this beta using peer-to-peer -peer hosting or something? Running off my Wi-Fi, I had better connections than when I was connected to my LAN cables. That shouldn't be the case for a dedicated server. World War II launched with peer-to-peer -peer hosting, right? Now for some miscellaneous nitpicks. High alert doesn't always work, letting you know when someone's looking at you from out of your view. 
And when you're running a perk like that, you tend to rely on the information that it's supposed to give you so you pay less attention to your sides and back. On top of that, demolition wouldn't work half the time either. I'd spawn in with only one lethal and it wouldn't give me the projected throwing arc. This becomes mildly infuriating. Now props to Sledgehammer for nerfing body armor. I didn't really get to experience it in its fast charge phase, I really only played while streaming and didn't run into enough people who had reached the max level to unlock body armor. By the time I was running into constant level 30s, they had already nerfed it. I only ran into like 5 people who used it. Field mics are hard to distinguish. I spent far too long staring at them and figuring out if they were friendly or not. And on top of that, you can lay out as many as you want. Like they, they charge pretty quick, you can throw one down, go across the map, throw another down, go across the map, throw another down. You can have like, you know, 30 field mics, as long as you can charge them that fast. Now the Goliath is fun as hell. I got quite a bit of enjoyment out of running over players and watching their corpses wrap around my tracks and start flopping around. They need to fix how it drives on uneven ground though. This thing gets stuck on a damn pebble. I can understand it not having the momentum to get up a set of stairs, but a little bump shouldn't be an issue. A dog can teleport up a ladder, but the Goliath can't roll over a small rock? Come on. The settings menu is once again a cluttered clusterfuck. Once again, all the annoying settings are on by default such as motion blur and sprint cancel reloading being turned off. Why would they have that off by default? That makes no sense. And don't even get me started on the fact that modders were in the beta again. They were in the Cold War beta. They are in the Vanguard beta. What the hell? And the fact that websites are selling lifetime hacks for the game is unsettling. All in all, like I said at the start, the game is just boring. Nothing really jumps out at me as new and exciting. This feels like it should have been a $20 DLC for Modern Warfare. If Sledgehammer could fix the glaring issues from the beta, this game could be a generous 7, but probably a low 6 at best. I'm passing for now. I'll see how the game turns out, play a free week here and there, and possibly get it on sale. In the meantime, I'll be enjoying the classics such as War at War and Black Ops 1. Now that's not every single issue I had with the beta. The video is running long, I, everything is not coming to me, but I know there are more issues. If you, you know, enjoy the game, props to you. You know, I'm not bashing on anybody for saying they're, they're enjoying it and liking it. That's great. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I am not enjoying it. I don't like this game. It's, in my opinion, it's bad. It is very bad in the state it's in. And like I said, it's, it's just, it's boring. It could be a, a, an okay Call of Duty at the end of the day. We'll see. But at very best, it is okay and not worth $60. I do have to say, though, while I said before that, you know, everyone's allowed to have their own opinions and there's no such thing as a wrong opinion. What the hell are these people smoking who say that this is the best Call of Duty they've, they've ever played? I don't understand how somebody can say this is the best COD experience they have ever had. They must be very new to the franchise. Modern Warfare must have been their first game. Cold War must have been their first game or something. There is no way that somebody can legitimately sit here and say this is the best COD they've ever played. <laughs> no way. You are high. Very, very high. I want to be as high as you. How do I do that? Please let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Alright, that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for coming out. You know, uh, let me know your thoughts below on the game. If you're getting it or not, whatever. Just, you know, discuss some of these issues. Like, th this is just inexcusable for the 16th game coming out annually 16 call of duties 16 years of call of duty how is this such garbage i just don't understand but you know like subscribe whatever